Hello and welcome to my presentation on an elliptic curve cryptographic coprocessor for resource constrained systems with arithmetic over Salinas primes and arbitrary prime fields. I'm going to start off talking a little bit about the concepts of asymmetric cryptographic, cryptographic systems. These systems are based on key pairs uh, which consist of a public key and a private key. They are required for digital signatures and key exchange protocols. They are based on trapdoor functions, where, well, trapdoor functions are functions where the inverse of the function is not computable in polynomial time, but even the functions themselves have very high computational complexity. The two main representatives of the asymmetric cryptographic systems are the elliptic curve cryptography and the rivers chamier edelman algorithm, where we focus on the elliptic curve cryptography due to the shorter key width required for the same level of security. For resource constrained systems, uh, hardware acceleration uh, for the trap for these for computing these trapdoor functions can speed up the calculation of digital signatures and key exchange protocols and so on. To get a bit of an insight how these concepts work, I'm going to show you the elliptic curve DFI, the concept of the elliptic curve DFI Hellman key agreement protocol. We see here that Alice and Bob each have a private key called DA or DB respectively, which is an integer, and the, they both compute a public key, and in Alice's case, this is QA, which is DA times G, where G is a point on the elliptic curve and is a domain parameter. This multiplication of the scalar DA with the point on the elliptic curve G is the so-called point multiplication or point scalar multiplication, and this is the trapdoor function of the elliptic curve cryptography. Hence, Knowing QA and G, an attacker is not able to compute the private key DA of Alice. Now, when Alice receives the public key from Bob, she computes DA, her private key, times the public key QB of Bob to compute QS, which is the shared secret of Alice and Bob. No one else than Alice and Bob is able to compute these because you need one of the you need one public key, uh, one of these public keys, and one of the private keys, the and the other private key. Um, now there are multiple cryptographic schemes. I just showed you one example, and the idea of the coprocessor is that the primary processor controls the the cryptographic scheme. Uh, for example, this elliptic curve Diffie Hellman uh, and the coprocessor only computes the point multiplication. But since the point multiplication is the most expensive operation of these schemes, um, the, the, the rest, uh, the, rest uh, the, the remaining operations of the, to compute this scheme are negligible com in comparison to the PM. The point multiplication um, is uh, computed using two point arithmetic operations called the point doubling and the point addition, um, which are again based on prime field arithmetic. In prime fields, all arithmetic operations are performed modulo p. Um, and the modulo p operation for addition and subtraction can be very easy compu can be computed very easily. Um, for addition, for example, the maximum result is 2 times p minus 1. Hence, we can just check whether the result is larger than p, and if so, uh, we can subtract p to be again in our prime field. For the subtraction, we can check whether the result is less than or is negative, and if so, we can add p. But for the multiplication, we need um, this definition of the modular operation given here. Um, and we see that this modular operation requires a division by p, and this division by p is very expensive. Hence, in uh, the next slide on slides, I'm going to show you uh, two alternative definitions of this modular operation, which omit this division by p. The first one is a reduction for a special class of primes called the Salinas primes. Uh, as an example, we take the P192, this is a prime standardized by NIST. Um, we see here the definition, and we can see that this is a low order function um, of 2 to the 64. And all Salinas primes are defined as a low order function of some power of 2. Um, if we now have a, a result of a multiplication of two prime field elements, we call this result A, we can split this result into six 64 bit words A5 to A0. And we can also write this as a sum formula, of course. 
Um, and now to compute a prime, which is a modulo p192, we only need three modular additions, where the first addend is t, um, is the least significant, the 192 least significant bits of a, so the bits which doesn't need any modular reduction. And the other three um, summon the other three addons as one to s three um, each correspond to one of the remaining terms in the addition form uh, the sum formula. So for example, s one uh, corresponds to a three times two to the one hundred and ninety two modulo p one ninety two. So, sorry. Um, so uh, we see that this um, this reduction fun uh, this reduction method is very simple. We only need three modular additions. But on the other hand, it's not very flexible because we can only do this for Salinas primes and most uh, and each Salinas prime needs a different split um, needs a different split and a different um, definition of S1 to S3. So implementing this um, the, when implementing this, this can only be used for this P192 prime um, proposed by NIST. Now for arbitrary primes, um, there is a different, um, there is another method which, um, which omits this div division by p, and this is the Montgomery reduction. And the idea is that the expensive modulo p operation is replaced by a modulo r operation, where r is larger than p and is a power of 2. Hence, uh, division by r is just a bitwise shift and the modulo r operation is just a truncation. But uh, to be able to use mod r instead of mod p, we need to map to the Montgomery domain, which is done by multiplying by r mod p. Now in the Montgomery domain, the addition and subtraction are exactly the same, but we said that we have no problems with the modular operation for addition and subtraction, only for multiplication. And now the multiplication in the Montgomery domain results in some r squared term, which we need to re reduce. And therefore, and for this, we need the Montgomery reduction. And this Montgomery reduction computes uh, the input times r to the minus 1 mod p. And we see here the, the algorithm for the Montgomery reduction. And the last five um, lines of this algorithm are the same um, reduction that we have after the addition. So we check whether the result is larger or equal to, uh, larger than p. And if so, we subtract p to be again in our prime field. Um, what we see here is that we don't need any modulo p operation or any division by p. We only need mod r and division by r, which is a truncation or a bitwise shift, respectively. Seems pretty easy, but on the other hand, uh, we see that we have two multiplications in here. Um, and we need this reduction after each, multipli uh, after each field multiplication. Hence, we round about triple, triple the number of multiplications used per pm. Now the idea of um, our coprocessor design is to use both of these reduction functions. So we want to use the easy uh, reduction function for the Salinas primes for a fast computation according to the NIST standard. But on the other hand, this can only be applied to this P192 according to the NIST standard. But at the same time, we want to implement the Montgomery reduction to support arbitrary prime fields, um, even though it's much slower. To achieve this, we implement the reduction functions after the multiplication in microcode um, to be able to, um, to, choose, to choose, depending on the prime field that is used, we choose one of two different microcodes, uh, where one, where one microcode is for the fast PM according to NIST standard and the other is for arbitrary prime fields. The reduction after the, uh, the addition or subtraction for the P192 NIST prime is implemented in hardware, so we don't need any additional clock cycles for this reduction. Um, the point arithmetic and parts of the prime field arithmetic are implemented in microcodes to reduce the logic requirements. And we, proposed, uh, we propose a RAM of 64-bit width, um, which allows for a very easy concatenation of 64-bit words um, needing only um, using only the the address logic in the microcode. 
Now, what we see here is a uh, is the concept of our arithmetic unit. Um, don't want to go very deep inside, but what we see here at the input is that we have two 64-bit inputs, which are multiplexed to three 64-bit input registers. And this is exactly what we need for the modulo, modulo reduction for the Salinas primes. This, um, this uh, multiplexing of two 64-bit uh, inputs to three 64-bit registers. And down here we have uh, an accumulation um, to accumulate uh, the four addons of, uh, of the reduction for the Salinas primes. And we also see here that we have a modulo P module um, because we need, uh, which is only, which is the modulo P module for the P, for the, for the reduction after addition and subtraction for P192 prime. Um, this can be disabled for uh, arbitrary primes. And um, so this accumulation is, um, accum is um, an accumulation of modular additions. Um, hence, we can very, very easily um, compute the, the reduction according, um, for the Salinas primes according to the NIST standard. Now, we see here a table with, uh, where the results uh, of an FPGA into, um, FPGA implementation on a Vertex 7 FPGA um, of our design in comparison to other, other designs uh, from the literature. And what we see is that there's only one design which has significantly lower area requirements than the one proposed in this work. But on the other hand, it had, has very high latency for the PM. But it is to be noted that to our knowledge, this is the smallest design um, supporting arbitrary primes by using the Montgomery reduction. Then there are two designs uh, shown here, uh, two implementations shown here, which have significantly lower uh, latency than the design proposed in this work, um, but both have very high area requirements and both are optimized on using DSP units in the FPGA which is advantage uh, for an FPGA um, implementation, but not for an ASIC implementation. Now, overall, um, we are able to compute a fast PM according to the NIST standard, um, which we can use for authentication or digital signature schemes or so on, uh, with communication partners that support this NIST standard with a P192 prime. And this requires about 1.3 milliseconds. Um, but at the same time, we are able, using a different microcode, um, to, to compute a PM over arbitrary prime fields where, with primes up to 192 bit, uh, which requires about 4.2 milliseconds. Um, the logic size of our implementation on the Vertex 7 FPGA is very small with just 383 lookup tables. Uh, slices, I'm sorry, um, but we see that we need 16 kilobit of RAM, which is not that small, but uh, it has to be said that this RAM is including um, the, this RAM is the data memory, including, uh, is the data memory and the, the program memory. Now, um, overall, the design allows highly resource constrained systems to use flexible or low latency public key crypto cryptography, depending on whether the communication partner supports the P192 prime according to the NIST standard. So um, that's all for my presentation. I'm now going um, to give answers to the questions I was asked. And first I was asked to reflect on today's usage of cryptography and consumer devices and the availability of acceleration. Now, we only consider highly resource constrained consumer devices here. Um, and in these highly, in, in these, in these highly um, resource constrained consumer devices, uh, to all knowledge, usually only um, symmetric cryptography is used. Um, because symmetric cryptography is much easier to compute um, than this asymmetric cryptography. And uh, it allows for, it allows for, um, for encryption, but not for authentication. Furthermore, um, the symmetric cryptography uses only private keys. Hence, 
we need some key storage to, to store many keys for each communication, one key for each communication partner. Um, and all of these have to be stored safely, uh, securely. Um, on the, but for asymmetric cryptography, on the other hand, we only have one private key. This is our own private key because for all other communication partners, we only need their public key. But since this key is public, uh, we don't need to st uh, store it securely. So we only need to st store one, one key securely somewhere. Um, <clears throat> Now the availability of um, acceleration, um, to our knowledge, these um, designs usually only consider acceleration for hashing functions to allow for high, um, to allow for uh, high throughput, um, but not for um, cryptographic system, but not for for any encryption or, um, yeah. Um, the second question was how the work is split between the CPU and the accelerator. And as mentioned earlier, um, the idea is that the primary processor processes the cryptographic scheme and calls the, the, the coprocessor to compute the, P, the point multiplication. Uh, but since the point multiplication is, uh, is extremely, um, is extremely expensive to compute, um, the rest of the scheme is negligible. So this, the rest of the scheme can easily, even in highly resource constrained systems, can easily be computed on the primary processor. Um, the next question was, um, what is the IP footprint of the proposed coprocessor when imagining a final SOC design? Um, since we only have FPGA results, we cannot directly say what um, what the the IP footprint of an ASIC synthesis the synthesis would look like. Um, but when we compare, but uh, I want to compare it to a different to a uh, different design uh, that we did, um, which had um, which had uh, comparable um, logic requirements on the on the same FPGA, and this design was meant for an integration into um, um, into a flash memory controller and in this flash memory controller this the design required less than one percent of the total area and uh, and most of the area required by the coprocessor design uh, was um, was required by the RAM. Hence if we are able to um, to share this RAM with the primary processor uh, the additional area when using this design, when adding this design to a primary processor, would most probably be neglectable in most devices. So that's all for my presentation. Um, thanks for your attention and have a nice conference. <laughs>